Rachel Maxey made a knitting machine video. And when a larger creator makes a video that touches your niche, you are required to make a response. That's just like the rules of YouTube. So here's my response. Rachel Maxey is a YouTuber who does makeup and cosplay and sewing and like cottagecore DIY stuff. And she recently dug her grandmother's old knitting machine out of her basement and made a whole video about getting up and started and then made a top. I'm a machine knitter. I work with a Brother 910 standard gauge machine and a Brother 270 bulky machine that is behind the camera at the moment. And I make videos about knitting machines and things that you can do with knitting machines and go on long tangents about software and hardware because I work with AYAB, which is an open source project, to retrofit the old Brother machines to be controlled by computer. All that being said, it's great to see more interest and excitement around knitting machines. So we are going to go through Rachel's video, and then I'm going to try to recreate the top that she made. But maybe with my own twist. We'll see. Alright, let's do this. In the original packaging. There she is. Let's do some detective work. <laughs> Old house. Some of you- Let's see. Knitmaster automatic home knitting machine. That is pretty vague. Let me do some research and get back to y'all. Okay, so it looks like Knit King is a brand that Brother was sold under in the U.S. That's pretty common. Um, Japanese machines were rebranded to be sold in the U.S. Baby. But it looks like she probably ordered this from a catalog of some kind. American That was before they were really popular. King Corporation. Do I know the first thing about knitting? <laughs> what do you think? No, 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 I don't. You don't need to know anything about knitting to get started with a knitting machine. It's helpful to understand the construction of knits and how knit fabric works, but you don't need to know how to hand knit. Ew, what is that? Ah! I was sort of right, but instead of demons, it's just ancient mouse turds. Feels like the weirdest instrument ever. Oh, what is that carriage? Wah! Even a child can operate it. Booey! Oh, it's interesting that it's at an angle like that. Construction time. Knit King. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to see if I can find the instruction manual for this one. MK Manuals is a website that has the instruction manuals for most of the old vintage knitting machines. So let's see what I can find. So I found this guy. This is similar to what she's got going. This picture to here is with a river. Um, but this one has a yarn feeder. I don't think hers does. Couldn't find one that went back to the 50s. Okay, let's go back to the video. Stitches are to be decreased as for an arm after the trip. Always read the instruction manual that comes with your machine. These are usually pretty helpful. Here. The can box slides. The can this box? Way. Oof. Okay. Okay, so with the machine this old, the first thing I would do is look at the sponge bar. I don't know if this one has a sponge bar because it is so old, but it probably has something similar. Turns out this is hard to do. Moves along here. That shouldn't be okay. difficult. The carriage should slide smoothly. Like that. Have to go to knitting position, which is halfway, making this as wide as. Oh, like those are some rusted needles. Knitted fabric to be. I... Okay, if you find a knitting machine in this condition, pull all of the needles out of the bed and see if you can clean them. If you can't, they need to be replaced. Conveniently, brother needles are easy to find on the internet. I think if you go over this, it's supposed to like lock it in place. Uh, oh no. It's not supposed to be that hard. Hold please. After thoroughly lubing this bad boy up. Don't use WD-40 on your knitting machine. No. <sighs> there are special lubricants for knitting machines. You can find them on the internet if they aren't packaged with your machine. Let me explain to you a little bit how it works. The piece of yarn goes here, gets wrapped around, and then however long you want your piece of fabric to be is how many needles you need to set. Then you- Nope, that's not how that works. <laughs> the size of the work on the machine is not necessarily the size of the work once it's been washed and blocked. What you should do if you're getting started is make a gauge swatch with the tension that you're planning to use in the yarn that you're planning to use, and then measure that and figure out how many stitches per inch you have, and then use that to figure out how many needles you need for the size of project you're making. I have made my first item. Would you like to see it? Here it is. <laughs> a, uh, 
baby bonnet for frogs. That's not bad for a first attempt. Mine were pretty gnarly. Duh. We do have like a nice solid stitch in the middle. I... <laughs> it looks like she has some yarn breakage there. I switched from the green yarn I was using to the yarn that actually my grandmother had in there because if you look at the thickness difference, it's quite... Okay, this is a good time to talk about yarn and knitting machines. The machine that she has here is a standard gauge machine. Most of the vintage knitting machines out there are standard gauge. Standard gauge machines work best with lace and fingering weight yarn. You can't get much thicker than that. The size of yarn that you can use with the knitting machine is determined by how far apart the needles are. If you try to work with yarn that's too thick, the carriage is not going to want to go and you're going to have a bunch of problems. In this, I'd say the white yarn is fine and the green yarn is too thick. Blocking the machine and falling apart and it's just a little too I'm not surprised. Fuzzy. For now, I'm just going to stick to the skinny fabric, which is now a nice brown due to all of the rust in the machine. So she sprayed a bunch of WD-40 into the bed and there was rust on the needles. So all of that is going to start coming off in the work as she's working with it. To get rid of that, you can make a couple test pieces or you can wipe the whole machine down. So under here, loop-de-loop -loop and pull. I'm just going anti-clockwise. You wrap cast on. Cool, okay. And then what I struggle with is that you're supposed to do this in a very succinct and smooth motion, but I don't know if I have this too tight or something, but it's very it's jerky, which it says specifically you're not supposed to do, but you know. <laughs> So then, All right. bring this back around the front. Okay, this machine doesn't have a yarn feeder. So it's a lot like a bond or an ultimate sweater machine where you're laying the yarn over the needles yourself. This is similar to the technique that I use when I do intarsia, and I've got a bunch of videos on how I do that. But when you're doing this, you want the long tail of the yarn to be away from the, the side that the carriage is on. That way, as the carriage goes across and the needles pull the yarn in, it has more tail to work with. If the tail is on the same side as the carriage, then it's going to pull the first chunk of yarn in, and then the rest of it's not going to have any slack to keep pulling in, and you're going to have a bunch of trouble. Front and back around. I don't think you're supposed to do that. Smooth. Smooth. Ooh, that was smooth. Okay, go over it. Oh, and it's stuck again. Okay, go, go, go. That's right. That's right. Oh, yeah. Feel the thrill. This is not the most exciting content you've ever seen. Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, Very <laughs> nice for a first swatch. See the progression from when I started to then eventually figuring it out. <laughs> Still don't trust myself with the thicker yarn. So I think tomorrow don't I'm gonna use run the to the yarn. store and get yarn that is this thin, maybe. My grandma put together, which hers is a lot fancier than mine, wider and thicker than mine, which I don't know how she did that because look at mine is like tight. I would assume. She changed the tension. That's how you do that. It's those that number gauge. I will see you bright and early tomorrow morning and we will make some progress here. I theorized myself a little bit. I played around with it and tried that yarn that I initially tried, the green. I made this. I basically... That is a very dense swatch. It is doable to work with yarn that thick, but I wouldn't recommend it. Turned it up to eight instead of one. That's the tension eight. dial. Larger plan, numbers are looser here stitches. Here is my plan for today. Fully know what I'm doing. I'm gonna stick with symmetrical rectangular shapes. That's a good a starting point. A crop top of some kind, long rectangular tube top, button in the middle. I can't wear tube tops without going <clears throat> literally. Buttons are a little advanced for a starter project. I still haven't done buttonholes and I've been working with knitting machines for about two years. Nine inches long with a little bit of room, just in case the edges are a bit wonky, to be safe. Okay, nine inches long, I'm taking notes. If around 11 inches. Oh. This okay, she wants the top to be nine inches long, but she's getting 11 inches of needles. Measuring the wrong way. Okay, we'll go with it. Oh boy. 
is large. Got all of these. Oh, and it looks like she's knitting it sideways, which is cool. The claspy thing. Watch, it should be right. open. Now I have to loop. You can see the grease on the machine. Oh no, just wipe it down with a cloth. Oh no. This is supposed to be on the other side. Ah. So on most machines, you can just pull the carriage off one end and put it back on the other. I don't know about this one though. Heck. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, I'm scared. <laughs> this is not uncommon with new knitters and new projects, but I'm glad that she kept trying. Oh no! I think I just have to keep doing the- Okay, this is probably happening because her yarn is a little too thick, and it looks like she doesn't have the machine clamped down to the table, so it's gonna move around as she tries to knit. Off, here, scratching this. It wasn't a very smooth run anyways. Amazing. I said this process would be trial and error, so I'm nothing. So these machines are designed so that they don't need weights, but weights will help after you get a piece of a certain size. I'm not a woman of my word. No! No! Oh, We've gosh. all been there. I was on such a good stride. Not gonna give up. That's Bye, the spirit. George. Keep going. This will not get the best of me. This is like a full body exercise. I'm just saying. Tell you how. It's gonna be a lot harder to move the carriage when the yarn is thick. I had a really good stride for a while. Wait, wait. How did she finish the edges? I wanna know how she finished the edges. Okay, put your knitting machine at the edge of the table so that the work has room to hang off of it, not in the middle like that. Wait, did she just, like, take that off the machine with a raw edge? There's not enough long tail there to do a long tail bind off. Do these pieces just have raw edges? Like, pieces of yarn. In the instruction manual, it says to iron these, you're supposed to put a damp cloth over them and then iron that. So I'm going to do that. They're very scrungly. That is one way to do it. I would recommend washing, especially this looks like acrylic, so just shoving it in the washer is fine. Unless the edges are raw, in which case it'll just fall apart in the wash. But that like curly scraggliness doesn't go away. That is a feature of a knit. Embrace it. That's one way to do it. Did she add darts to the bodice? It is complete. Would you like to see it? What is this magic? Wait, 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 wait. Okay, it looks like it has darts. It has darts. In a sideways knit piece. I guess if you just shove it in a sewing machine, you could do that. How'd you like? Ta-da! Okay, we got buttons. Those look like machine knit buttonholes. Here is my little very basic. And it looks like she's got the wrong side out, the pearl side out instead of the knit side. Big rectangular <laughs> item of clothing. My little hobbit. Okay. Yes. It actually, in all honesty, I'm- Machine sewn buttonholes. Quaint. Cute. And I don't so the raw edges might be okay if she's putting them into a seam somewhere in the back. Oh, I'm just, I kept putting it off because I was scared of failure and I was scared of doing a whole intro. So here's the thing. When you're getting started with a knitting machine, you will fail. Like, there is no way to learn how to use a knitting machine without making a bunch of mistakes and dropping a bunch of pieces off the machine. But like, if you keep going with it, you will get it. You know, kind of felt like a, an archaeologist in some ways, digging out this ancient artifact. <laughs> Figuring out how it worked, teaching myself all the little mechanisms, problem solving, without being able to do a quick Google search like I usually do if something goes wrong. <laughs> okay, wait, except you can do a quick Google search. There are a bunch of resources on the internet. It is a lot like archaeology, but 
enough of it has been archived and there are plenty of YouTube channels that show you how to use these things. So that is the Rachel Maxi video. I think she did pretty well for her first thing made on a knitting machine. Like it's a lot of effort to get up and start, especially if you don't have anyone with you who knows how it works and you haven't like thoroughly researched things on the internet the way that I did. Um, but like, it's, it's great. I would love to see her do more. This kind of machine is great for intarsia because you're already laying the threads over the needles so you can easily do like fun patterns and complex things. So I would love to see her make more with this, but let's see if we can recreate her top. So we watched the Rachel Maxi video and it looks like she just knit a big tube. Her top is knit sideways and it looks like she kind of pieced it together from multiple pieces and then added straps and a button band on the front and what looks like uh, machine sewn buttonholes. And then she added bust darts on the front too. Here's the thing, that's too much effort. <laughs> We're not gonna do that. Um, the thing about knits is that they stretch. So I'm just going to make a tube that is smaller than my bust and it will stretch to fit that. And then I don't have to worry about the darts in the front. Um, and if I were to put darts in something that I was knitting sideways, I'd do them with short rows, but that's a little too advanced for what we've got going on here. So I'm just going to knit a circular tube that is smaller than my bust and it'll stretch to fit. And I'm not going to leave an open front closure because I have yet to even attempt buttonholes and I don't really want to machine sew them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast onto waist yarn to leave a live edge and then cast off on waist yarn and then graft the two ends together to make like a seamless loop. And then I'm just going to sew buttons onto the front for a fake uh, buttonhole look. And then I'm going to try the whole thing on and measure the length of the straps and then attach them separately. So in Rachel's video, she just kind of measures on the bed of the machine that's not going to give you an accurate indication of how large the final garment is going to be because things tend to be stretched out on the machine. I'm gonna work with some three ply astroquill that I have on hand. And I've worked with this enough in the past that I know what the gauge is for the tension that I use on my machine. And then I'm just gonna do the math to figure out how wide a piece I need and how many rows I need to get the like thing that I need. Bright pink is not normally my color. I actually purchased this because my grandma likes it and she had requested a piece and it was either going to be in this pink or in the teal that I made the swancho in. So now I just have a bunch of this bright pink that I don't know what to do with and I think <laughs> it'll probably photograph well, especially with this white shirt that I have on. So let's do this. With this yarn on this machine at this tension, this is how many needles I need to knit a nine inch wide piece. You can see it measures 14 inches of needles. I'm casting on to waist yarn here and then switching to my main pink yarn and then just knitting forever. I think it came out to like 400 rows. This machine needs weights and I move them up periodically because the edges pull in as I go. I'm leaving a long tail to graft the two ends together, and then I'm gonna cast off on waist yarn. Here's the final piece. This is a Kitchener stitch. It's a seamless way to join two live edges. And when it's done and you pull off the waist yarn, you can barely see the seam. The tube part of the tube top is done. Let's try it on and see how it fits. <laughs> this is not blocked yet, so it's even more curled than it will be when it's done. She had hers on inside out so that the pearl side faced out. It's not bad. 
It's not great, but it's not bad. Then I just need to measure for the straps. So it's gonna go from about there on my back when that rolls up to about there on my front. And let's just call that 12 inches. Okay, so I need to make two tubes. Do I make them tubes or do I make them? I'll make them long skinnies that are 12 inches long and then attach them. <sighs> but first, lunch. Lunch. The straps are going to be two inches wide. I'm casting on with an e-wrap here because the ends are going to be part of a seam and don't need to be pretty. And resetting my row counter to zero. Then I bind off around the gate pegs. And I need two of these. We're back. We're back. Find my face. There's my face. Okay, so I have my tube and I have my straps. I'm going to steam the crap out of these and then put this on and do some measuring and figure out where to attach the scraps. This yarn is coated with something. That makes it go through the machine easier, so once it's been washed, it will bloom, which means it'll fluff up a bit, but steaming it now will help the curliness relax and make it a little easier to work with until I block it. All right, let's do this. I'm gonna work a center front and a center back. So, you'll be the center front. And then halfway across, so you center back. Okie doke. And then we put it on. And where's my center front? Where'd you go? There you are. Center front here. And then you are going to go about there. Just quickly attach you. Nope. The center front is no longer in the front. Okay. Center front in the front. And then you go approximately there. Come on. Come on. Put your marker in that. And then... Put my center back. So let's call that... That many away. <laughs> my very... Three inches away from the center back. And I'll attach it there. Alright. Let's do this! Oh crap, it's been recording this whole time. <laughs> it's done! I added buttons to the front to make it look like there's a closure there, even though there's not. Okay. That's a thing. I think it came out pretty similar to what I intended. Come on. <laughs> Just futzing with the neckline on the shirt. Okay. 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 There we go. It is pretty similar to the one that Rachel Maxi made. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I think we're gonna end it here. It was great to see some more excitement and enthusiasm around machine knitting. Of course, I care about these things because the more people who are machine knitting, the more demand there is and the more supply we get because of that. So 
you're thinking about buying a knitting machine, check out my guide, um, and I will tell you how I got one of my knitting machines for free. If you have a machine that is like Rachel's, I have a tutorial for an easy sweater that doesn't require any fancy techniques. It just has a folded hem and then some short rows for the shoulder shaping, but you don't even have to do that part. If you want to check out some of my other videos, I made a vintage inspired intarsia letter sweater. And I also have this late 1890s Victorian cycling sweater that I reverse engineered and made on a modern knitting machine. Thanks for watching. Happy knitting. Whew.